If you feel powerless over your diary, this is one for you. How many meetings do you have every week or every day? Someone said to me the other day, my week always looks nice and clear on a Monday, but by Tuesday afternoon, I can see I'll have my headset glued to my face for the rest of the week. It was such a familiar feeling. Clients will often say to me things like, ideally I'd get out for a run at lunchtime, but I try to protect a lunch break and someone puts a meeting in it because that's the only space that I have available. I just need a soapbox moment here. If the only space someone has in their diary all day is their lunch break, do I really need to tell you, you shouldn't be booking that? Something that I find really interesting is the mindset that we all seem to have around meeting requests. And I've totally been there myself too. It's so common to say, put in my diary, when actually the Outlook calendar invite is an invite, a meeting request. You literally have to accept it for it to go into your calendar. But there's something in the way the invite comes in, or maybe the culture of our environment that makes us feel we have no choice, but we do. And I'm gonna add a disclaimer here too. I know this might seem like a pipe dream and actually putting this into practice with your management or your team might seem like a bit of a no-go, but stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you why it's possible and how you can make it happen, regardless of where you work or who you work with. I once worked for a company where a rules implemented that meetings could only happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It was pretty controversial, but for me, it made total sense. There were too many meetings happening all the time. Nobody was ever getting any actual work done. By condensing all meetings into two days of the week, it meant that, yeah, you had a couple of really intense, busy, tiring days, but you had three days where you were free and clear to get on with what you needed to do without interruption. And actually, when you know on a meeting day that you're not expected to be squeezing in work in between, it's much less draining than when you're trying to switch your focus all the time or get something important done in a 15 minute break. The implementation of the rule definitely didn't work for everyone. And I can even hear you now saying, yeah, but what if we need to talk about something on a Wednesday? And I hear you, but the concept is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today because the concept is what gives you a different perspective so you can use and protect your time more effectively and therefore work on and deliver what you need to to the best of your ability. This rule was implemented because nobody felt they had any control over their diaries. Nobody ever said no to a meeting because surely you would presume if someone was asking for your time, they must need it and everyone likes to feel needed. But actually, think of all the other reasons you've ever invited someone to a meeting. They need to know the outcome. They want to know, or let's be real, you want them to know that you're working on or you're in control of something. Maybe you don't want them to feel left out. Maybe you think it would be good exposure for them. And now when you put it like that, how else could you achieve the same result without taking an hour out of their day? When we're at work, we're so often so busy that we take everything at face value. We make assumptions about people's motives or what it is that they want from us or why. It's easy not to stop and think about the wider perspective, especially when half the time the person making the request of you is in the same boat, not thinking about what that means for you or what assumptions you might be making. We all know communication is king but it's hard to live to it when there's a million other things going on and we don't want to drag office politics, stepping on someone's toes or just generally upsetting someone into it, right? So there are some really easy things that we can do to better manage our diaries, our relationships, and therefore our time. First and most importantly, make sure that your meetings are meaningful. Scope out what you need to talk about and most importantly, what outcome you need from it. If you're having a discussion without a purpose, you could be there all day. It's the worst feeling sitting down to a meeting and nobody taking control of the conversation or being able to call it when you're done. Have an agenda, know what you're aiming for, and then invite the people who need to contribute. Second, actually use the optional section in meeting invites. If you're inviting someone from an awareness perspective, but it's not essential that they're there to contribute, let them know it's happening and if they have the time and the inclination to attend, they can, but it's up to them. Give them that control back of their diary. And third, 
build in time for making tea. There's no point in even trying to deny it. When you have a meeting, you cut it to the wire before you get up from your desk because it's usually interrupting work that you're in the flow of. But you also know to sit through an hour's discussion, you need to be comfortable. That includes a wee and a tea break. I'm just being realistic. And it's so frustrating when you make the effort to get to a meeting on time only to find you can't start because someone else is doing just that. So frustrating. So accept that it's going to happen. Most people, including those who rush to get there on time, would prefer to have that space for, to transition from what they were doing into the right headspace for what you're going to talk about and build in that time. That might look like a one hour meeting actually being 40 minutes with 10 minutes either side for this transition. So work your agenda around that and stick to the point during the conversation. When we take part in meaningful meetings with progressive discussion and clear outcomes, we feel useful, valued, like we've contributed, which is all really rewarding and makes us feel great about ourselves, which sets us up for more motivated work afterwards and a relaxing evening. When we join meetings where we know we don't need to be there, people are late, distracted by their devices, answering emails, we feel disrespected, really undervalued. Like we also have better things that we could be doing here, but we've shown up, so why can't you? What happened the last time you joined a meeting that made you feel like that? Was it productive? Did you go back to your desk fully energised and smash out the rest of your to-do list with a smile? Didn't think so. Awareness of how we're using our time is such a key part of how we manage it. And we can start to take back control of our diaries by giving others control of theirs. If you want people to respect your time, act like theirs is just as important because it is. That does also mean if someone has invited you to a meeting, you need to be showing up with your full attention so you can get the thing done well, effectively and get back to it. It also means questioning your attendance if you don't think it's relevant to you. Not everyone will have seen this video. You might even have a bunch of recurring catch-ups in your diary. And when it comes to line management and checking in with your team, these are probably more important than you might be giving them credit for. These are typically the ones where you put them in with good intentions to prioritise your team's well-being and progression while things are quiet. And then things get busy and you say, I don't have time for this this week. Are you okay? And then you never get back to them. It's more than okay to have a meeting, to move a meeting that isn't critical for one that is, but here's what you need to think about. How often are these meetings scheduled in? Going back to my earlier point, and what's the purpose? Could you schedule them less frequently, monthly instead of weekly, or more frequently so they don't take as long, monthly instead of quarterly reviews, for example? And if you are going to push them out, how can you capture the purpose in another way that means you're not losing touch or missing something important? Rather than asking someone, are you OK? And let's be honest, expecting them to say yes. Give them a set of two or three questions that gives you an insight into what's really going on for them. So you know whether the catch up needs to be rescheduled soon with importance or you can really skip this one. Be smart with your time. Respect yours and others and the energy and ability to focus and switch focus to actually empower you and your team to perform at your highest level in the quickest time with the least energy. That's the real meaning of efficiency. Meaningful meetings are the easiest switch you can make towards this. And even just by one person taking this approach naturally influences others to do the same because your, your response to one meeting invite or the way that you send one out exposes others to this concept and invites them to do the same. I work with the next generation of leaders to support them in becoming exceptional in their roles and consciously creating a healthier culture around them so they can continue to grow and actually enjoy what they do. Because believe it or not, you actually can have both. If you found this concept useful, and you want to learn how to implement this and other strategies to improve your performance and increase your impact at work, especially if you think you might face a management block when it comes to applying such a concept and you'd like to know how to approach it, send me a message today to chat about how I can support you and transform your career from ordinary to exceptional.